Howdy, YouTube. I'm Max. This is my cousin, Bo. Bo uh, Schlechter, what's up, y'all? We work with Everglades Equipment Group, and we heard about this cool new product we got called the Gus. It's the, uh, what, the Global Unmanned Sprayer System. I think that's exactly right. It's a fully autonomous sprayer. Kind of looks like a, like a missile. So we're headed out to Okeechobee to meet with our precision ag guy, Kyle Norton, to uh, get some info on this thing. All right, so me and Bo are here talking about how we should start every video, and I think uh, I think we should start with him going ahead and just tackling whoever we're interviewing. I'm that a day. full bone spear, Kyle Norton. We're coming to find you, Kyle. <laughs> Where you at, Kyle Norton? You're gonna chase around the dealership. It's seven a.m. It's seven a.m. We don't care, Kyle. Where's Gus at? Everglades equipment. Oh look, they got Gus right out front, boys. Boom. And girls, they got Gus right out front waiting on us. The Gus. What a beauty. What a beauty. All right, we found the elusive Kyle Norton. Bo's coming up on him now. Mr. Wow. Kyle Norton. Kyle Norton and Brad Rush. Oh yeah, we got them both. We heard about the dream team. We heard. What's up, Kyle? How are you doing? I'm Max. How's it going? Are you really filming right now? Everything. Hey, you guys, this is a different type of video, man. Get ready. Hey, are, uh, are y'all a specialist? No, I'm just a guy. Okay, because that's what we kind of heard. that It was like some poor dude's going to be walking around guys. He is the guy. Yeah, that's actually what we heard. Man, we got some, we got some yeah, slackers back right here. All right, now... Interview time. We found Kyle Norton, although that was quite a task in and of itself. So I gotta get the mics out real quick and go ahead and get Bo and Kyle mic'd up. It'll look a little more professional after after this little intro deal. Good morning, guys. I'm Bo Schlechter with Everglades Equipment Group. I got Kyle Norton and Chad Thomas here. Morning. Listen, we're trying to tell the story of Precision Ag and where it's going. Um, for the equipment industry, for the large ag industry. And today we got something very special for you, which is called Gus, okay? And, and to be honest, I don't know much about it. We drove all the way to Okeechobee to figure out what in the world's going on with this machine. And we got two specialists within the industry that are gonna walk you around this thing and tell you how, how it's helping large farmers, large ag farmers get the job done better. So guys, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And now we're just gonna have a casual conversation to tell you all about this machine. So I think the first question we have, if you guys wanted to take turns at answering this, is generally, what what does Gus generally do? Maybe what does it stand for and what is it? Gus is a uh, global unmanned sprayer system. Um, basically it is a, a guided uh, orchard sprayer or grove sprayer. Um, basically it's the answer to uh, higher Spray cost and higher um, labor cost. Very cool, very cool. And, and tell me this, uh, maybe we start from the front. Let's break this thing down a little bit because I have no idea what I'm looking at. So this is uh, obviously not driven by a human being. How, how does this thing drive? It is fully autonomous. Uh, once you get your mapping done, which is via Google Maps and the laptop and the Gus Fox, um you pretty much put your information in there and let her rip all right well we got to look at that gus box in a second okay but uh maybe let's let's start looking at each piece of this and maybe break down how they build this thing so these machines are <clears throat> all the sheet metal in the tank and things on it are stainless steel with a very heavy duty frame and structure underneath the drive train hydraulic oh, driven four-wheel steer four-wheel Hydraulic driven, that is. What kind so, of tires we got on it? So there, there's three options. These are the standard tires. We have a narrow one and a wider one. These standards put it at about seven and a half foot. The narrow put it at about seven foot. And there's a wider flotation. I'm not sure about the width, but it's for some really wet, nasty areas. That we have that option. All right, well, let's go with some general questions. What is that, Mr. Kyle Norton? <clears throat> what do we got there? That is a LiDAR. It, the machine works off of GPS location and it uses a LiDAR for the visual. So there's a ratio of that, which is adjustable to a point. So it uses location to go down the rows, <clears throat> excuse me. And also it uses the LiDAR to look and see to help row center and, and look for obstructions and safety. 
Uh, if somebody walks out in front of it, it'll stop. Uh, if there's an obstruction there, like a tree down, it'll shut it down or stop it, alert the operator. The operator can turn on the camera on the front and look and see it's just a clump of grass pushed through. Okay, so that camera's kind of manually operating in case you actually want to tune in and see what's going on. Correct. Correct. Okay, and this LiDAR, from what I've learned, is <laughs> is it's basically a camera looking, and that's how it's it's understanding where to go, what to do, what's, yep. it, what's actually in front of the machine, correct? Correct. A okay. lot, lot of safety features. That, for one, will we'll look for obstructions or, for example, somebody in front of it. The front bumper, there's an upper and a lower. Either side will shut it down if it hits something. All the way along this bumper, there are sensors that'll shut it down. Uh, there's safety shutoffs on the laptop in the truck. There's safety shutoffs on the back. A um, lot of safety features on it. What do we got under this hood? That's where the brains is. So in this box is where the computer is stored and all of the cellular modems and all the different the brains. Got all your sprayer controls here. You've got fans to keep the uh, camera clean, clean and also um, provides positive pressure inside the box to keep everything cool and clean. Filtered air coming in, it goes out at the LiDAR and the camera to keep spray material from settling on it and obstructing it. Very cool, very cool. All right, so what else we got back here? <clears throat> So just for a quick overview of the machine itself, 600 gallon tank. This is the regular gust. There is a mini gust version, which is a 400 gallon tank and a condensed version of this. And so this is the tank we're talking about where we're gonna be keeping on our- The chemical tank, spraying, correct? Correct. Okay, very cool. Fuel tank, this is a 90 gallon fuel tank. So there's a 13 to a 14 hour run time before you have to fill up. So if you wanna run two 12 hour shifts, a day shift and night shift, you don't have to stop mid, mid shift and refuel. Okay. Okay. Very cool. What do we got here, Kyle? So right here in the, the, the box is, it's a, we call it a belly pack. This is basically an oversized remote control for the machine. So you can manually uh, steer it, load it. It has all your spray controls, throttle, two wheel to four wheel steer. You can switch it to two wheel steer like if you're loading on a trailer. So it's a lot safer. Uh, and of course your joystick remote control. And, and again, another safety shut off. That charges in here as well. So really just a big remote control car here. Correct. There is another, like an Xbox game controller that hooks to the laptop that you can control it also. Wow, we definitely got to see that. All right, so talk to us about the goods here. Okay, what we've all been waiting for. So this engine is a 6.7 Cummins. We have the last nine that you could get. After these are gone, it'll be a 3.8. Uh, smaller engine, but same horsepower and torque range. Those engines will be final tier four where it has the def fluid. We have these nine because of there's no def fluid and less issues with them. Okay, okay. This is an I system. Basically what it does is the, the spray manifold is in three zones. There's five, five nozzles, five nozzles, and then six nozzles. So it looks at a tree. It's a small, medium, or large tree. It turns those zones on according to the size so you're not wasting chemical. So there's your zones there. <clears throat> yeah, five, three different zones. Well, what do we got here? So let's talk about this back back fan. Is this where we're actually spraying from? <laughs> Spray comes out of the nozzles. The 36 inch fan, which is a extremely high CFM, comes out here and blows the spray out. The pump is a Myers two stage pump, very dependable pump. They've added some safety features for some more harsh environments where edging and limbs and things are so to protect the filter. The fan is only 36 inch compared to a lot of them that are 48 inch. Don't let the size fool you. We've had customers ask us to turn it down a little because it's blowing good leaves off. So there's plenty of canopy penetration. That is where you fill your tank. You don't fill it from the top from a standpipe. Okay. You hook a mixed truck to it and push chemical in it. Gotcha. There is a cable as long as this cap is off. The machine will not go back in auto, so there's a safety feature there, again, that you can't hit auto and rip the hoses loose. Very cool. When you're filling it, this, this light is red. When it gets to 95% capacity, it'll start blinking blue to let the mix truck guy know, hey, you're at 95%, go turn the pump off. If 
for you overflow chemical. Got gotcha. you. We've put it through some of the paces and tested for some of the Florida citrus market. Really bad sand, uh, muddy, deep ditches. Uh, we've, we've come out of some of the ditches with one tire off the ground and it comes out no problem. Uh, the really bad sand, the one customer is probably some of the worst sand in Florida. They had to water the tires, but it goes everywhere their tractor sprayers would go. Um, again, some of the ditches, when they get full of water, you obviously wouldn't want to run this in four or five foot deep water like they do some of the tractors. How are they spraying before, you know, Gus? And talk a little bit about what, what was before and what could be now with a, with a fully Gus operational setup. Currently, most Florida citrus growers use a tractor and a pull top sprayer. 99.9% .9 of the sprayers have a similar system to the I system that we have on here. So they're already familiar with the value of that. The Gus is roughly twice the cost of a conventional tractor and sprayer, but with the right conditions, one operator can control four, four to eight Gus with one operator. Four seems to be a magic number in this environment just because if we have so many canals and shorter runs, it kind of tightens that up for safety. And the operator, the operator's sitting in his truck operating it, correct? Or how, is, how does the operation uh, differ from when the guy was in the tractor pulling it to what he does now with Gus? Well, obviously there's a, like you said, there's a, an operator in the truck. So he's usually in the general area. He's not sitting 20 miles away in his living room. He's in a general area, so if there is a problem, he can go to it, see what that obstruction is, and so forth. You eliminate the operators in the cab. Some of the struggles is, is the remote growers, you know, to get operators to drive 30, 40 miles at times, it, it's just really difficult to find uh, help at all, much less qualified help. So with the Gus, when you, when you send it the job, it stores it on the machine and it goes to work. Some of the comments we've had at demos is it's steady. It doesn't stop and talk on the phone. It doesn't stop for lunch breaks. You stop and put chemical in it like you would before. and It just keeps working. We are the Southeast dealer for Gus. So we're expanding our territory into Georgia and, and Alabama area into pecans and peaches. So those markets where it's a lot better environment, open skies, on the smaller trees, better ground than some of our citrus, you can probably get six to eight machines per operator. So, very cool. So yeah, another thing to add on on here on the engine with these Cummins is that engine fan. You know, with the leaves and things that's on the ground, every few minutes that fan will reverse and blow air forward instead of pulling in. So it helps keep trash blowed off of your radiator and your your hydraulic fluid coolers and things like that. The company has made some great. Uh, they're good about if there is something that's not quite right for our environment that they'll, they'll change it. A good example is that LIDAR on the front. It used to be down on the ground in the front. With the higher grass and things we have here, had to move that up so it has a better view and not constantly stopping. How much does something like this cost? Uh, that gus, the way it's, the units we have in stock, the way they're equipped are $303,500. Okay with the eye system. And how much would the, you know, that tractor you spoke about with the spray behind pull, with the pull behind sprayer, how much is something like that cost? About half. About half, all right. So you're doubling up on the cost, but I think you're gaining what, fourfold in efficiency? You're gaining efficiency, you're not gaining, you don't have an operator per machine. That's right. So you don't have, you know, you don't losing out on unemployment taxes and- So it's really not just PPE about gear the, and, it's not yeah. just about the operators, because again, this thing brings precision to the table, Correct. you know? Let's walk over here, Kyle. Tell us about this uh, Gus box y'all been talking about. The Gus box is what goes on the roof of a pickup, a, 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 say a gator, whatever you wanted to have it in. We would suggest like a pickup that has a controlled environment for the laptop purposes. This is the command center. This is what you use to do your mapping. You use it to observe what the Gus is doing and control it, send information. There's a cellular modem in this box along with the Gus and the communication is done through cellular. There is a 900 megahertz radio option. Uh, these machines do not have the radio, the ones we have in stock. The new ones, if you order them, will have a radio as standard as part of it. 
Those machines will be $13,000 higher than what we have in stock, but they will include the radios. If you wanted to see a future farming guy in his truck with an Xbox controller, it's basically video games and farming coming together here. Now, can you set these to run um, on their own if you map the field out? Or do you have to drive them? As in getting to the field or the field like itself? Once it's in the field, they're going to run themselves, right? Right. It sends This box sends the job to the machine. And let's say, for example, you're in a sketchy cell area. Once that machine has the job, it's going to keep going until it's the job is done or it sees an obstruction and stops. The, the job is stored on the machine. Right. So a lot of the driving we're doing is mainly for getting it to the field and getting it around the field when you need to. You can actually do a follow me mode. You can have 10 of them following this truck. Wherever this truck drives, the machine's going to follow. That's incredible. Or you can do a drive path, which you can go on there and map out a path to go to the field. Right. As, as long as it's a private road, not a uh, public road. And it'll drive that path down that road to that field. Then you... you and that's all using GPS? GPS, LiDAR, and the wow. mapping on there. Hey, Max, give me a look. They promised me I could get on the Xbox remote and drive this sucker. Now, uh, Chad, how do I do this? Got the trigger. Right trigger? Yeah, that's going to move it forward. Oh, that's going to go Left forward? Left trigger moves it back. Look at that. Left trigger, yeah, there you go. Left trigger goes in reverse. And go. I'm just turning here. World's biggest remote controlled car. Check that out. $300,000 remote control car. $300,000 remote control car in action. That's unbelievable, man. Look at that go. What does B do? Like spin move? Kick flip. What, what does Y do? <laughs> don't hit the Y. Whatever you do, don't hit Y. Don't hit Y? Don't hit Y. Alright, I'm going to bring her back. I'm going to bring her back. Uh-oh. She's real shifty. Yeah, the steering's touchy. Well, folks, I think that's all she wrote for Gus. All right, everybody. I hope you got what you're looking for today. We wanted to talk about Gus with our experts, absolute experts. And um, we just want to remind you, we're going to keep making films like this to show you the smart technology that's coming out that's affecting the ag world that's affecting the equipment world in general we hope you tune in subscribe to the channel and thanks again for showing up